I'll be completely and boldly honest in saying that this wasn't exactly a premeditated video, nor was it the first video that I wanted to release on this channel. Initially, I planned to generate a much more analytical video on the concepts of horror game development, a project that was requiring a much more significant amount of time than I previously thought. In light of the state of worldly affairs and my own ironic and grating cynicism, I now find it more appropriate to alleviate some tension with a premise that hopefully isn't being played out too soon. Given that most nations have enacted some form of self-quarantine, I see no better time than to bust out one of the most famous Valve titles and obliterate hordes upon hordes of undead in the name of preventative isolation. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Left 4 Dead 2 maps to enjoy in quarantine. Now, allow me to establish this concept just a little bit more definitively. Today we'll be discussing some eye-catching maps available for download and play during the self-isolation periods currently underway to help fight the spread of COVID-19 or coronavirus. I don't know about you, but killing zombies makes me feel more safe, I, just saying. Either way, we'll be breaking down some maps that you can play solo or online with your friends to wait out the storm. Just note, you may see some modifications that change the appearance of weapons, character models, items, and so on. This video won't be discussing those modifications, only the maps being played. And each campaign that I discuss will be credited in the lower left corner of the screen, like so. A link to a Steam Workshop collection will be left in the description, and there you'll be able to find all of the maps that I discussed for easy downloading. And without further ado, let's jump in. If there was a way to describe simplicity by White Eagle in a single sentence, it would be, I'm running out of ammo and patience. The Simplicity is easily one of the most eye-catching campaigns available in the workshop, almost entirely due to its aesthetic choices. Each of the campaign's five levels is completely free of texture or specularity, consisting entirely of geometric forms that are done up in black and white lines. Inspired by the works of MC Escher, the layouts of each episode feature large expansive rooms with complicated and hidden architecture that boggles the mind with its simplicity, and kind of an ironic twist. And this simplicity doesn't stretch into just the campaign story, however. There are detailed graffiti entries on the walls of each safe room and scattered throughout the levels that assist the player in digesting what the hell is happening around them. The campaign takes place in the basement of a facility known as Synergenics. All told, it feels somewhat similar to the Horzine Biotech Company from the Killing Floor games, though without the hyper-intense gore and disfigurement. I mean, that sounds fascinating, right? And honestly, I don't think anyone could disagree with that. But the problem comes is that this level is horribly underscored by inconsistent foresight in terms of its playability. Let me explain. The architecture of each episode within the campaign changes drastically, including great deals of verticality, mazes, and object repetition. It does indeed feel like an Escher painting, but not necessarily as visually stunning or compelling as one. All the cosmetic elements this level are engaging at first, but they quickly grow stale and samey because they never develop in any significant way. Black and white, that's all you get, at least for the vast majority of the campaign. What struck me as odd about this campaign was its seemingly tentative desire to push the envelope and try new things. A great deal of the campaign contains the same motifs, mazes and the like, and yet there are still these brief moments of creative intrigue, like this walkway from the final episode, for example. Or this short arena segment, where enemies fall on you from the ceiling in episode 4. There's really good variation scattered around in here, and it takes up just the smallest amount of each episode. Some of it poses a great challenge, even. It feels really well developed and planned, and yet it just can't seem to keep that part of its development consistent. A certain levels, such as the Pillar Maze in Episode 3, for example, are rife with unjustified difficulty. The constant barrage of Boomer Bile makes for an extremely dull and frustrating affair, and the dual tank bosses that appear as you move to the next area are confined in too tight a space to survive with any great level of consistency. I mean, typically I'll play original and workshop campaigns, or Left 4 Dead, on advanced difficulty for an added challenge. And this just could not be done without other human players to back me up for this campaign. Uh, following the frustration that is constant at Mobile in a pillar maze, and a duo of tanks that, with the weapons available in the space given, will completely decimate your party, I had no choice but to lower the difficulty just to pass the part with any level of legitimacy. The same thing goes for the finale of the campaign. The whole that area is massive, swarming you with enemies on all sides, and for whatever reason, the AI simply refuses to pick up and use the available supplies, whether that be guns, medkits, or pills, adrenaline, anything. I had to lower this to easy to complete and finally finish the level, which is concerning considering that something as open as that shouldn't hold that level of difficulty with or without other human players. Coupled with that with some grading level design, resulting from remarkably low draw distances, and you have a relatively mixed experience on your hands. 
The reason I'm still talking about this campaign, despite my general disapproval of it, is for the co-op capabilities. This level clearly seems much more well developed for four human players, as evidenced by this version of the gnome challenge from Dark Carnival being present in episode one. Four gnomes, four players, there's no way to complete it without having every single one carry one of them. I mean, that element of cooperation would make this level genuinely challenging and entertaining, should you have the friends to play with, and when you consider that alongside this crazy architecture that appears in episodes 4 and 5, as well as the artistic inspiration behind it, you get a level that's worth at least one play, probably. The only thing I desperately cha push to change is the color scheme. Black and white is cool, but it creates some very poorly defined spaces throughout the level. All of Escher's work as well was monochrome, sure, but consisting of complex shading and perspective to boggle the mind of whoever was viewing it. Seeing more of that influence would have made a much stronger experience, in my opinion. And looking at the general concept from behind it, I wouldn't even argue that if you were going to pick an artist, Escher is the person you should pick as an inspiration for a level. Impossible architecture and optical illusions are fun, but they don't necessarily make for a significantly playable map, especially when the whole goal is survival point A to point B. It just seems kind of redundant and silly for the most part, and I hate to say that, but that's just how it goes. And of all the maps I'll be discussing here today, Daybreak by Danbo might just be one of the most recognizable or well-known. Deservingly rated as one of the best campaigns in the Steam Workshop, it's a solid inclusion into anyone's repertoire. Much like most Left 4 Dead maps, one carries a pretty simple story that just connects the missions. The Left 4 Dead 2 survivors crash out of the roof of the Daybreak in San Francisco following a safety helicopter escape, and the goal becomes to escape the city before everything is bombed and destroyed by the military. As far as originality is concerned, Daybreak is relatively safe with most of its experimentation with the limits of Left 4 Dead and its engine. For the most part, it's a straightforward shot to the end with scattered elements of a multi-path approach and uh, some interesting side affairs. What Daybreak does best is simply being a good map. Areas are spacious enough to navigate through, though with enough twists and turns to hide various secrets and allow for several different paths to your destination in each mission. Additionally, the aesthetics of the map create a rather, uh, undead... <laughs> no? Okay, never mind. <clears throat> uh, lively presence in each of the missions. This makes the maps feel remarkably more developed and coordinated than other campaigns in the workshop and assist in the assumption that this could actually have been a Valve-approved map. Generally speaking, Daybreak isn't a terribly difficult experience. Playing it on Advanced gave me some anxiety in particular moments, but that was also due to my opting into the Gnome Carry sub-challenge that some maps have. Overall, it's a pretty balanced map that most people can enjoy whether you're here for a challenge or not. Personally, I actually love this experience in nearly every way. The maps were winding and presented different challenges every time, from the gas can collect-a-thon to sprints to the safe room. There's a little bit of everything here for everyone. And my only considerable gripe with the experience is actually the length of each mission. Taking these missions slowly practically guarantees success, but would require an extensive amount of time, as this is not only a five mission campaign, but each of those missions takes a considerable chunk of time to complete. All told, Daybreak is a really well-informed view at how to create a seriously entertaining, if safe, Left 4 Dead 2 map. I, I wholly recommend it to anyone who's looking for a map good enough to call canon in the right context. Hey, you know what Valve game is awesome? I mean, Left 4 Dead 2, obviously, but so is CSGO, and if you've ever wanted to play both games at the same time, this would be the campaign for you. DE Prodigy by Jert2 is a port and recreation of the popular Counter-Strike Source map of the same name. It's a relatively short campaign, coming in at two proper missions and one rescue, with a reasonable amount of limited difficulty. In general, this is one of the more fun and speedrun-focused maps I've looked at for these reviews. And honestly, I really appreciate it. The attention to detail here is really cool, and while it's nothing too complex, this campaign feels exactly like an addition to or extension of the map that it's based on. Having that kind of reference to work from, I think, really helps inform the way the map plays. There's a lot of tight corners and blocked off corridors, you're moving from room to room in a way, and because it's based on the elements of a competitive shooter, I feel like they manage to maintain a certain level of openness no matter what. 
Your the room you're in may be pretty tight and compact, with stone walls and no windows, but it still doesn't feel like you're cramped inside. There's enough room for you to move around hordes that come in through doors or to dodge the attacks of special infected without having to worry about it. And I think that that's a really interesting balance to strike when you're working with a very limited amount of space, seeing as how DE Prodigy is basically an underground nuclear bunker or whatever, I don't know. It's tight and dark corners can make for some really fun shootouts as well as heart-pounding run-ins with some special infected, and at the same time, it's not so packed that you'd be struggling to shoot past your teammates in a firefight. At the same time, it will respect your time by not throwing you into some random maze or awkward and complicated challenge scenario. The last mission of the map is actually very interesting as well, because it introduces us to a wide and open room to fight the infected in whilst awaiting rescue. I mean, this is really different from pretty much every other aspect we've seen in the level beforehand, so opening up like that, I think, really does opt for a more significant variation in the way the last level has to be played. Uh, rescue in the last level is triggered by not only fueling, but also defending a train, and that's a pretty fun and simple combination to two standard Left 4 Dead rescue missions, I think. At the same time, it's still challenging enough to make completing the campaign rewarding to some extent. I mean, you're swarmed by hordes of special infected and zombies everywhere. It's a reasonably fun time, and I think that that's what this whole campaign's more or less about, just having fun with what's in front of you. I mean, this is no daybreak, mind you, I'm talking it up quite a bit. It's shortest and rather reserved creativity makes it a less eye-catching campaign than others that we've seen so far, but it still holds its own as a solid warm-up or beginner's map. And I'd be more than interested to know what this campaign was like on hard, because there were a couple of moments where tanks just kinda plowed through me on advanced, and I would absolutely love to watch that happen on hard. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> Sometimes you'll come across a mod or a custom map or what have you that blows you away so hard your immersion is practically immeasurable. Chernobyl Chapter 1 by Campion, Ben, Proxis, and others is exactly that kind of mod. Uh, okay, let me start with the story. Story first. The survivors bribe a helicopter pilot to fly them out into the Siberian wastes, as it's rumored that the conditions for permafrost prevent the spread of the virus. However, lo and behold, the chopper crashes and now the survivors must fight their way through the hordes of zombies that now inhabit the ruins of Chernobyl on their way to Sanctuary. Plain and simple, that may be one of the best companion stories to a zombie campaign I have ever heard. It blends seamlessly with the apocalyptic themes of Left 4 Dead and creates a truly stunning motivation to keep moving forward. The story isn't the only enticing thing about this campaign though, because these episodes are fucking gorgeous. You know, I mean, in that nuclear wasteland kind of way. Each of the levels you'll explore in this campaign is packed to the brim with custom models and painstakingly decorated landscapes that fully and totally pull on your attention span. I was so enthralled in the environments and gameplay of this campaign that I actually forgot to record one of its five levels by mistake. That's how good this experience was, at least to me. This campaign has to be one of the most well-developed and passionate projects I've ever seen, not just for Left 4 Dead, but for games in general. So much so, in fact, that the developer Avarice actually created a companion collection of mods to introduce new weapon models and effects into the game and add to it even more. That's how cohesive this experience was designed to be. I did use this companion mods for my playthrough, by the way, and it did make it all that much better. Absolutely wonderful choices from Avarice uh, in terms of just absolutely world-building small little developmental pieces. You know, like switching all the weapons into Russian formatted AKs and things. It's a really, really clever idea, I think. Now, this campaign is long. <laughs> its five episodes span massive expanses of levels with twists and turns all around and with enough quietly incorporated player choices to pathing that nothing feels off limits or out of place. I mean, imagine the actuality of Chernobyl. The city of Chernobyl filled with radiation and zombies and burnt out buildings that you could go through almost in their entirety. That is what we are looking at here. Finding a way through every single building, finding every little secret, every hidden cache of ammo or guns would be massively time consuming. And I think that actually adds to the credit of the passion of these developers even more because something like that is hard to successfully finish. Now. Unfortunately, that level of development comes with a couple of caveats. Number one, it's extremely hard to survive. And number two, it's extremely hard to run. 
After playing the first level under subpar conditions that included like less than 60 FPS and occasional stuttering which was followed by a crash as I tried to load into level 2, I had to restart the game, uninstall the effects packs that came with the companion collection that Avarice created, and uh, lowered the detail of my in-game graphics actually. Um, and, I mean, that seems remarkably severe for like an 11, 10 year old game, but there's a good reason for it. Each map is actually massive, I cannot stress this enough. Imagine the expanse of a single Left 4 Dead map put together, like all of the missions put together, and then double it. That is essentially what you're getting throughout these five missions. Additionally, <laughs> I should note that um, these maps might be hard to process because, um, well, they're alive. And I don't mean to say that uh, the level feels packed with motion and movement, I mean that it's actually literally alive. Playing on the idea of nuclear mutations, these developers actually created and implemented active moving map elements like fleshy floors and glowing radiation stacks to drive up the horror factor ten times and turn Left 4 Dead into Stalker Call of Prithya. Genuinely, this map is amazing beginning to end with a great amount of challenge, even on normal difficulty. I played this entire campaign on normal, knowing that it was five missions long and I still had a pretty hard time with it. And not to say it was impossible, but just the, the absolute expanse of your goal becomes like daunting. And the inclusion of things like radioactive zones that damage players, but occasionally hide rare weapons or ammo, it, it, it makes it that much more complex. And I think that complexity just gives life and depth and adds to the amount of time you can spend effectively exploring these mission levels. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely blown away at this point and going off script here because I think this map has some of the best potential to be turned into a total conversion, which I just might do. The thing about a map like this is that it's so separate from everything else you see for a game like Left 4 Dead that it feels like it needs even more. <laughs> Like, I'm not saying that they didn't develop the maps enough, they very clearly went above and beyond to make a campaign that is absolutely amazing, but I feel like other mods can add to it even more. For example, imagine the Slow, uh, slow Zombies campaign, and, uh, but not campaign, but rather campaign mod. Essentially, it makes all zombies a lot slower, hit a lot harder, and require headshots to kill. That would make this campaign even more interesting you know, cut back on the levels of Special Infected, or change the skins for uh, Special Infected to look like radiated, disgusting, wasteland creature. I mean, there's a lot of possibility here. This could honestly be a standalone video game if given the right resources, and I am immeasurably impressed by that fact, because this is an 11-year-old game, and this campaign, in order to be playable is in eight parts, including models and textures and seven parts for the maps. That is insane. And I cannot say enough that if you have not played this map before, go and do it now, you fucking bellend. It is an Oscar-worthy map. Go do it. Stop the video. Go and do it now. And so, there you have it. Four maps to keep yourselves locked away with. We're in trying times right now, and... The world feels just topsy-turvy and crazy, like a bad movie that's like two, three weeks too long. <laughs> so hopefully this was something that gives you some semblance of hope or at least made you laugh or get interested in a classic from 2009. Whatever you took away from this, hopefully it gave you some peace. Please, I know this was kind of a jokey, dumb video at first about this whole isolation thing, but please do what you can to stay inside. Keep yourself healthy and stay away from others if you're not. If I may be so blunt as to be very suddenly serious, people are sick and dying. It's our duty as a member of a global community to do everything that we can to help others. Please, donate to your local food bank and hospitals however you can. Thank the people in your life who take the risks to pick others up when they need a hand. Most importantly, watch out for each other. At the time this video is being released, the COVID-19 pandemic will be a serious matter throughout the United States, and we will have a responsibility to our people as a country to do everything in our power to save each other from becoming a statistic. Please stay inside and go to the link on the screen that you can see right now for more information on how to stay safe. We can get through this together if we all try collectively.
Well, uh, you made it to the end. Thanks for getting this far, and, uh, sorry if that got kind of heavy at the end. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like or a subscription below. Uh, what you're seeing on screen right now is a uh, screenshot of my videos folder, which is all videos that I plan to or am in the process of making, and for the most part, they are all in progress. <laughs> I have loads of other content that I want to make and I'm working on at the moment. It's all on the way down the pipeline, so stay tuned for more. Um, links to everything that I've talked about today will be available in the description, including all of the maps compiled into a single collection, the link to the CDC website for information on COVID-19 and self-isolation, uh, as well as anything else that I feel would be valid, including in the bottom. Uh, honestly, if uh, it becomes interested, I would happily share my personal modification list for uh, the first couple of missions that you saw here. Um, any of the stock footage was all taken using a bunch of custom mods that I chose personally that weren't meant for any specific reason. So if y'all are interested in seeing that, I would happily be able to do that. Um, and I am going to be working on a, uh, Chernobyl Chapter 1 kind of conversion for Left 4 Dead, so keep an eye out for that as well. It's kind of a last minute option to cop into, so thank you guys all so much for watching and, uh, have a dreadful day.